Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. Today I'm going to show you another technique using our fresco acrylic paints and this time it's one that I learned from Lynn Perella when she was over here teaching some classes for us and it's quite a simple technique, you'll do the whole um, wonder why you hadn't thought of it before idea because I certainly did. Uh, it's called bumping a stencil. So we're going to take a stencil, apply some paint through it and then shift it or bump it slightly in one direction and apply paint again. So you can see on this sample here where the stencil has been bumped with a light colour on top of a dark and again that's a feature that you can do with fresco paint or with paint that you can't do with other products like inks and sprays, dye sprays, those kinds of things. So it's very nice when you're making a background to be able to have a light colour on top and then it means you can come over the top with your stamps and other embellishments. So I'm going to show you just a few samples first so you get the idea of the sorts of things that you might like to try with this technique. Here's another one, this one here um, has got very bright colours underneath it so there's some claret, some pumpkin soup, a bit of smoked paprika, different colours underneath it and then it was um, the harlequin stencil that was bumped with French roast and nougat on top. Uh, I quite like to sand and um, distress it at the edges as well. Then this had additional stamping on top, this image was stamped onto our crackly uh, tissue paper. Um, and the image was painted on the tissue paper from the top and behind so you get you can then lay that over the top. Uh, there's some metal card here with paints on it and of course some um, more embellishments made from layers of crackly and crunchy. This one here it's all about colour contrast so it's greens, blues and oranges and the bump technique was used on a tag here and little bits of the tag were torn and added at the end as embellishments. So that one's pretty straightforward. We've got a crackle background in the background there using the fresco crackle glaze. And then lastly, this one covers quite a lot of different ideas that we've been using um, on various videos of late. Uh, you can see the bingo stencil has got a dark colour underneath and then bumped with a light on top. We've got some painted fabric as a layer in there. Um, we've got, uh, it's painted underneath and there's even little bits of treasure gold. Um, you might not be able to pick that up, but there are little shiny bits of treasure gold a brass I believe that one is around the edges and also treasure gold is on the um, metal card here which has been embossed painted and then treasure gold wrapped over the top of that and you can also rub your treasure gold on top of buttons and things or those are Tim Holtz ideology numbers so quite a bit going on with that one so I also would like to show you the project that I made um, when Lynn Perella was over here and this is where I first learned the technique. Now, she took it to a whole different level. Um, because we've used numerous stencils in here, and I kind of took me hours and hours to work so that all the different stencil patterns blend into each other. Uh, and lots of, I, I tried to choose delicate ones, um, bolder ones. I really loved this little delicate butterfly one that was that was one of my favorites but um, it's there's so many layers of paint on this I can't even begin to tell you and it's colors that I don't normally use uh, but I just really enjoyed going with it and keeping on tweaking it until I kind of got the effect that I wanted but here um, a lot of what I was doing at this point was light colors underneath and bumping with darker colors on top um, subsequently from you doing this technique on, on numerous occasions, I actually prefer the other way around. I prefer to have the dark underneath and the light colour on top. Um, I just find in general it tends to look a bit better, but you can do it both ways. Uh, you just have to experiment yourself. So this is just an example of the sorts of things that you can do. You don't have to use one stencil. You can use loads of different stencils and use your frescoes to blend them in. Obviously for this technique I suggest that you stick with the opaques because if you're coming over the top of colour A with colour B you want to be able to obliterate so it needs to be the opaque paints that you use. 
The products you need to do a stencil bump is obviously a stencil of your choice. Um, when you're new to it, stencils with quite open designs are a good way to start. A tag is a nice surface to work on, but you can do this onto cardstock, you can do it onto wooden products, anything like that. Uh, cut and dry foam is my um, preference over a paintbrush for this because you can get nice even application through your stencil. So I use I used pieces depending on the colour groups. So um, this tends to be two colour groups. So I've got one piece for my oranges and one piece for my blues. You need a sanding block because we are going to distress after we've applied paint and a selection of paints. Now um, I said before you do need to have some opaques so I've got my snowflake which is always a good one in this particular technique. Uh, butternut is going to be my light orange. Initially I'm going to build some colour by um, on my background so I'm going to use a translucent to build depth on top of the butternut and similarly mermaid and beach hut. Mermaid's the opaque, beach hut is a translucent so I'll use the beach hut to build depth on top of the mermaid. Uh, then when we bump we're going to need a darker colour so that's where inky pool comes in or you could go to a much darker orange or even something like claret would work nicely with this as well. So we're going to start by applying uh, colour to our tag. If you use cut and dry foam instead of a paintbrush, you tend to get quite a soft application of colour and it does make it easier to blend in between when you're using different colours. So I'm going to start with a bit of that. That one is called butternut, very light orange. Next I'm going to fill in these gaps with the light of my other contrasting colour. So this one is mermaid. And just tap that on there. So now the trick is to start getting these two areas to merge into each other. So you go back to your first colour, see how much paint you've still got on the piece of foam and sometimes there'll be enough there to sort of blend that out without you needing to go and dip back into more paint. And you can also do the same thing if you need to go back to the blue. But I'm going to show you how to build depth. So if we go to our translucent, now that we've got a base of orange on there, we can build a much deeper colour by coming over the top. And you can smooch it that way if you want to have a softer, but I tend to always tap, I don't know why, it's just what you get used to doing, isn't it? Right, and then we'll do the same, so we're now going to a little bit of the beach hut. The more colours you have underneath when we come over the top with a stencil, the more interesting layers you will have to sand back to later on. So spending some time on your background often ends up with sort of quite happy results down the track. All right, I'm going to go back to my light orange. And this is the whole building up your layers trying to not have it too, this is my blue bit, this is my orange bit, trying to get it all a bit more blended and a bit more interesting. Go to the darker colour. So you see I try to build the light colour on one side of the foam and the dark on the other. And then we'll do the same, a little bit more of the beach hut. I like how it tends to go quite muddy when you add the orange to the blue. Sometimes it's not a look that I like, but with these particular colours, I do quite like it. Okay, so that is a base coat, a base coat background. So we're gonna give it a quick zap just to make sure it's dry. And now we're going to come over the top with a stencil. So I'm just going to lay the stencil on there like that. And ideally it's quite nice if you 
care you could there's two ways we could do this I could use two different dark colors so I could go to my really really dark blue which is inky pool and I could put the inky pool the dark blue over the orange areas now the other way I could do it is I could get a different contrasting dark like claret and put a bit of that over some of the blue areas let's get a little bit of claret now both of these colors these darker ones happen to be translucent so they're not particularly opaque which means that for my spots to really pop I might need to apply this two times We'll soon find out. Now I do like to sort of tap tap through. I'm going to do it again. So a bit more of the inky pool. And the trick with this is to make sure that the paint's really sunk down into your piece of cut and dry foam. And then just gently tap it. I'm moving my stencil a little bit but the whole purpose of this video is to move the stencil so doing it a little bit sooner than I planned all right let me just get a bit more claret on there for a little bit more contrast claret goes a bit purple of course when you mix red and blue together okay so here we go we've got this is the first step so you've got some blue and red spots on there and thoroughly drying that now the next step is to take your stencil line it back up and then just bump it again and bump it for the first time really so it's all lined up perfectly on top of there and then I'm just going to nudge it a little bit in one direction not a whole lot just a little bit so I'm sort of looking to check that I've got a little half moon shadow visible around all of the spots evenly now at this point you got a choice you could go to a completely contrasting color but whatever you do it needs to be light so I could go to my snowflake or I could go back to mermaid would be quite nice snowflakes really opaque so I'm going to try that one to begin with because snowflakes opaque it's going to go straight over the top and totally obliterate without any difficulty Sometimes when you do this technique you might get a little bit of seepage underneath the stencil. It just depends on how you apply the paint. Right, so I kind of created mermaid because my snowflakes turned blue with the blue paint that was already on there. So if I want it to be really, really white, then just apply another coat on top. quite good to have it contrasting where it's whiter in some areas and, and bluer in others. Okay, so now when we lift that off you can see where you've got the shadow underneath from the original stencil. I'm going to dry that. Now the next step is to take a sanding block and to slightly distress this. I tend to think that at the moment this looks very structured, you've got paint on top of paint on top of paint in three layers. If you take a sanding block and start to um, erode that, you'll get some of these nice colours coming through underneath and you'll distress it and the layers tend to merge together. So you can be a little bit you can choose how much you want to distress it and where you want to distress it. I tend to start with the edges and then see how I like it. Okay, 
And the good thing about sanding it is look at how that orange really pops. You start to get a much um, brighter color coming through. And you also get some of those colors coming through from your lower layers. The ones that we worked on at the beginning. Whoopsie, just got a nice little bit of claret paint on there. And again, I got it all over my fingers. <laughs> well, we can either blend it in or we can take it off. Actually, just lucky that it happened to go on the uh, orange areas. Okay, so you end up with a bump background. Now this is great to use um, to build other things on. I quite like stamping over the top. Just adding a little bit of stamping um, can make all the difference, whether it's a flower or whether it's a little scripty stamp. Um, things like that work really well on top quite easily to make a nice background. But it's a good starting point and it's a nice technique. One last thing that I want to show you with this technique is when you've exposed the edges with your sanding block around there, if you really like the whole grunge thing, then you can come over the top with distress inks. Um, distress inks generally are not very compatible on top of paint because most paints are quite plasticky in nature and tend to um, resist the distress ink. But where we've got the paper exposed, of course the distress ink is going to sink quite naturally into that, but also because fresco um, chalk acrylics have that nice chalky finish, uh, you can actually use your distress inks on top quite happily, which is a good thing. Now sometimes I put it off and then I'll get a damp baby wipe and I'll just wipe a little bit back so that it's not quite so dark especially like here we've got some nice bright orange and bright blue so I want to be a little bit careful about that um, and you can also take your like a little stamp and you can stamp over the top which adds another element because I'm just using um, vintage photo here it's not too dark not too obvious um, but if you used something like archival jet black ink it would make a much more obvious well, let me show you the difference See that is much darker, so that makes it a bit more obvious around the edges there. You can do both. Oh my goodness, what is it with me today? I'm dropping everything everywhere. Alright, so see there, we've just got a little bit more interest with some script stamping in two different colours and darkening the edges with the distress ink. And that looks quite different to how it did before. You can imagine if you stamped a flower on here and then painted the leaves, um, coloured those in with opaque paints as well, they, it would stand up off the background. Or just use it as a layer in something else that you're making. Thanks for dropping by, we'll see you next time.